Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today's tutorial is about a preset called the Bevel Curve, which essentially performs a curve to mesh operation, but with the added support for UBs. It also provides rounded caps for your curve with just one click. I've talked about the development of this preset before, but I want to simplify the explanation and focus on the usage today. The name Bevel Curve comes from how Blender originally referred to this function in its curve system. I'm not entirely sure why it was named that way, but I've adopted the term because I didn't want a long and complicated name. Since this node is both important and unique, I also wanted the name not to be confused with beauty in geometry nodes. Regardless, if you have any issue with the name, Blame the Blender Foundation, why they called it Bevel Function in the first place. Just as a side note, if you're looking for a Bevel Mesh function for curves in geometry nodes, that's actually called the Fillet Curve. As you can see, we start with a square shaped curve called a quadrilateral. And if we add the Fillet Curve, then it's being Bevel the Mesh. Again, not sure why the name is like that. So this bevel curve preset basically performs the curve to mesh task. That's a key step if you want your curves to show up properly in your final render. It comes with a few built-in profiles like a circle and a flat. So in most cases, you don't need to add a second profile curve yourself. You can adjust uh, the resolution. You can adjust uh, the thickness with the scale. This scale can also receive a field input, for example, a spline parameter. So you can control the thickness from 0 to 1 from start to the end of your curve. There is also a decimal shift setting, which lets you divide the scale or thickness by powers of 10. It's great for instantly creating thin strands like here. So far, all these are convenient features, but the most important part of this preset is the UV generation. Generating proper UV for curves is too complex to explain in just a few words. It's something that was handled automatically by Blender's old bevel curve system. But for whatever reasons, that feature is not directly provided in geometry nodes. I highly recommend you to use a preset, whether mine or someone else's. Because setting this up manually isn't something regular users should have to deal with. Now, skipping all these backgrounds, let's look at how to use it. This preset provides a UB output, which you can store using the store UB map preset to pass this information to the material you set. Within this shade editor, you should use the attribute node to call this UV map. You might wonder, why doesn't this preset store the UV directly? That's because if you don't need the UV, storing it will cause reduction of performance. That's also why Blender's built-in primitives, like the cube, the grid, and the comb, have also split the output for geometry and UV. Now, this UV map is ranged from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Therefore, the UV map can stretch a lot when the curve is long. That's why this preset also includes a length multiplier output. It's a constant you can plug into the multiplier input of your stored UV map preset. As a result, no matter how long your curve is, the UV map will scale accordingly and your texture won't stretch. In practice, it's useful to store two UVs. Here, let's change the example where I stored two UV maps. One is unscaled UV map for masking or controlling ranges from 0 to 1 on each axis. The other one is scaled UVL or actual texturing without stretch or distortion. You can name these two UV whatever you want. Just be careful not to have the name collisions. There are also advanced UV settings. 
but they are for very specific use cases. So I will skip them for now in this generic tutorial. Lastly, let's talk about uh, the field caps feature. There is nothing complicated. Just enable it and you will get rounded end caps by default. You can also switch them to flat caps if you prefer. And you can add additional segments if you would like. These caps also come with their own UV and the lens multiplier included in the same output sockets. And if you want to scale the UV on the cap, there's a UV scaler setting for that. Here you will realize field caps option is of course missing in the flat profile, but they do work with custom profile if it's cyclic like the quadrilateral curve shaped into a cyclic square. On the other hand, if the custom profile is not cyclic, then you will have a warning saying that profile must be cyclic to fill cap. And yes, all these cap functions are compatible with set curve radius, as you see, and uh, set curve tilt. Although I think it's uh, pretty rare you would need to go that far. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.